This is a test of the emergency monitoring system. Wait, no it's not. This is a presentation of an IDS system and their use of honeypots. This will be demonstrated with the use of KF sensor. The purpose of this whole presentation is based on internet security and intrusion detection. This is all done through simulation of service, analysis of network traffic, and notification of abnormal activity. Generally speaking, the diagram on the screen shows you what an IDS system may look like to an attacker on the outside. What is seen by the attacker would be multiple services running on several different machines, usually on different ports. The IDS system provides numerous decoy services to attract the attacker. However, the services are only running on the single IDS system, but as far as the attacker can tell, there are many computers running the different services. The system is used to ultimately find out if someone is trying to break in and prevent them from doing so. This diagram shows if an attacker were to come from the outside, port scanning the network, they would find services running. As far as the attacker knows, they are seeing services from within your network, but really the attacker would be seeing the network IDS, considering it is sitting outside the first firewall. In this scenario, an attacker may still be able to hack services inside the DMZ, such as a web server or email server, because the ports for those services are open on the first firewall. However, they cannot reach the internal network because of the second firewall. The advantage of having an, uh, the IDS on the outside is that the ports do not have to be open on the first firewall, leaving less ports for the hacker to actually get into the DMZ. Another option is setting up the IDS parallel with the DMZ. This would be done inside the first firewall. The advantage to having the IDS placed here is it allows all traffic to be monitored by the IDS from within the DMZ. Only traffic on open ports from the first firewall would be able to make it to the DMZ unless the firewall is compromised. Assuming the attacker does make it to the DMZ, the IDS can prevent the attack upon the web server or email server. Even if this were true, all other content is still behind yet another firewall. The only disadvantage to this is that the port scans outside the first firewall, depending on the port's target, may not be seen by the IDS within the DMZ. Lastly, when the IDS system is placed behind the second firewall, the system is unable to detect port scans and other types of intrusions from outside the internal network. However, from within the internal side of the network, you may be able to detect an attack within the corporation. Also, the IDS would not have as much traffic to analyze, considering it's inside. But when a detection of an outside intrusion occurs, it's basically too late because the most important area of your network has already been penetrated. In this portion of the presentation, we will be explaining what a honeypot is, how KF sensor, or any IDS for that matter, utilizes honeypots, and why a honey token would be a useful tool in an intrusion detection system. KF sensor's main window shows the applications menu and toolbar, a list of the computers in your network, and the TCP, UDP, and ICMP data. The settings menu gives you access to the program's configure windows and to the logs of the application. The configure signatures window lets you select signature file and customize some signature rule event severity options. In the DOS attack settings window, you can adjust various options including the maximum number of clients, the visitor DOS attack limits, and the global DOS attack limits. In the local sensor configuration window, you have to choose a sensor ID, the local server admin connection, and the log level. The system log alerts window allows you to configure several settings for the system log server, like the alert details and filter. This allows you to manually configure a filter to, to a specific port, service, or both. In the event log alerts window, you can enable the event log, specifying the max binary value and the filter severity. The Customize window enables you to configure the application's behavior according to your needs and preferences. Using KF Sensor, you can emulate a multitude of services through the use of the honeypots that came pre-installed with KF Sensor. To create a distraction, for instance, running a Telnet service on the IDS would create an appetizing service to exploit. This distraction would take the hacker's attention away from the legitimate services we are actually trying to protect. Now on to honey tokens. A great example of a honey token would be in a large corporation. In the large corporation, you might have a network administrator and an employee. They would exchange a conversation outside of email. 
The network administrator might say, hey Joe, I'm going to send you an email with a fake username and password for our web server. Please don't use it. We're going to be making sure that your email is not compromised. If someone uses this information to log in, we're going to know that it wasn't you, and we're also going to know that your email is compromised. Now that we know that your email is compromised, the honeypot that they logged into, which would be the fake server, which is running on the IDS, is going to record all of that person's information. We'll be able to capture that person and know that you are your email is now safe. All that a honey token really is, is bait for a honeypot, so that a person's information can be captured if something like an email is compromised. This concludes our presentation on honeypots and honey tokens and their use in an IDS system. Also, as a side note, an intrusion detection system is not necessarily software like Snort and KF Sensor. It can be hardware. Cisco and other companies make multiple hardware IDS systems. These hardware intrusion detection systems can be monitored via the web and also can send many other forms of alerts to the network administrator. The hardware IDSs can be set up much like a firewall. Overall, IDS systems are a great tool for network security. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation and thank you for your time and patience.